Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, for a change, let's just talk about some interesting pivot table tricks. Let's just get started. All right, so the first trick has got to do with your field list. So once you create a pivot table, maybe a blank pivot table just like this, along with the pivot table, you're going to get your field list. This is where I can see all the columns of my data and I can also see the four quadrants, which are filters, columns, rows, and values. Now, I don't like the layout that the default pivot table actually shows me. So I always want to change my layout from the gear icon. I can actually change my layout and this is the layout that I actually like to have. So this is where I can have a long list of all the columns. Now, typically when you're working with a larger data set, which has a lot of columns, this actually gives you a lot of convenience to take a look at all the columns at once. And then I can easily conveniently drag them into filters, rows, columns, or the value section. So that was the first one. Let's just move on to the next one. Okay. So the other common problem that a lot of people face in pivot tables is the formatting of the pivot table. Now, let's just say that you do a lot of hard work in styling up your pivot table and making the data look like in a particular fashion. But the problem is that every single pivot table that you create, you'll have to do that formatting over and over again. Now there is an option in Excel to be able to capture all the formatting and put it as a default. So I'm just going to actually create a very simple pivot table here. I'm just going to get the customer name into my rows and also my sales rep right into my rows. And maybe across that I'll put the value section right here. Now you can see that this is the standard default pivot table layout. And maybe I would like to convert that into a tabular format, maybe have or do not have the grand totals and the subtotals. So all of these things, I will do it first. So I'm just going to click on the pivot table design tab. I'm just going to say, Hey, report layout is going to be tabular that brings into two different columns. And maybe I don't really want to have subtotals. So I'll say, do not show the subtotals. And I'm, that's actually gone. And I also don't really want to have these plus minus signs. So I'm just going to get to the analyze tab on the right hand side. I'll take those off as well. Now, this is the layout that I always want to have in my pivot tables. What I can do is I can set that layout as a default layout every single time in every single Excel file. I create a pivot table. I get that particular layout. How do I do that? So I'm just going to head over to the file here in the file. I'll just go to the options in the options. I'll click on the data tab and right here we have the changes that we would like to make to the default layout of the pivot tables. I'm going to click on edit layout. It actually asks you that where is the pivot table? So the pivot table is right here. Any one cell in the pivot table, I can then actually click on import and all of that formatting that I just did to my pivot table gets captured right here. In case you would like to do something further on top of this, you can also go to pivot table options, make changes to pivot table options. In case you'd like to do that, click on okay, click on okay. And now that particular layout that I just had applied to my pivot table is now stored as default in my pivot table. The next time I create a pivot table, I'm actually going to get that layout by default. All right, let's just go on with trick number three. So let's just say that we have these customers and maybe I'd like to repeat all the customers across all the blank rows. Now repeating the customer name, which is nothing but the label across all the blank rows. It's very, very simple. You can do that very easily. Just click on the pivot table, go to the design tab in the report layout. You can just say that I'd like to repeat all the labels right here, all the item labels and the name gets repeated all throughout all the rows. But what if I wanted to kind of take that customer's name and across all the visible cells, I'd like to merge it and put it out in the center. That's also possible, but that option is hidden in the pivot table options. Let's just go find that as well. So I'm just going to right click on the pivot table, go to the pivot table options in pivot table options. I have something called as layout and format over there. I'm just going to merge and center the cells with labels. I'm just going to say, okay. And those customer names get merged across all the empty rows that belong to that particular customer. That's that's pretty easy. Okay. Trick number four, how do you apply filters to the values? This is interesting. So we have the customer name and we have the region and across these two things, I have calculated the sum of the amount and the sum of the profit. Now, although pivot table does give me the standard filters that I get on the customer and on the region, but sometimes people also would like to have a filter here on the values calculation and on the profit calculation. Now, if you've been working with pivot tables enough, you would understand that you can't really apply a filter here. Even if I just maybe click on all the columns here and I go to the data tab, you will see that the filter is actually grayed out. I cannot apply a filter here. Now, one of the ways to apply a filter is that you go to the region here, you go to the value section and in value filters, whatever filter you apply, you can actually apply those filters on the amount or on the profit, but people would like to see the filters physically present on the pivot table. How do you actually do that? We'll try to trump Excel, maybe fool Excel and just try to apply the filters. So, what I will do is if the pivot table doesn't let me apply the filters inside of the pivot table, I'll just come outside of the pivot table, right? Adjacent to the pivot table. And then I'll go to the data tab and I'll hit the filter and the filters are just applied on the pivot table itself. You can also use a shortcut control shift L to apply the filter or even to remove the filter of the pivot table. So that was another interesting trick. 
Okay, trick number five, conditional formatting in pivot tables. So let's just say that for some reason, I maybe want to apply a conditional formatting on the amount column and I want to like to highlight everything above 175,000. So I select a bunch of cells here. I go to the home tab. In the home tab, conditional formatting, highlight cells greater than, and I'll just maybe write 175,000. I'm just gonna say, okay. And you can see that now I have applied conditional formatting, but the conditional formatting is not really going to the end of the pivot table because I selected just a bunch of cells. And in the future, the pivot table also can expand or contract. I wanna make sure that the conditional formatting actually sticks to the length of the pivot table. Even if the pivot table expands, it expands or it contracts, the conditional formatting also contracts. What you can do is as soon as you trigger conditional formatting, you get to see the small formatting options at the bottom of this uh, conditional formatting. You can click there and then you can go here and say that I'd like to apply the conditional formatting to not just the selected cells, but all the cells showing sum of amount for values for region. And that is going to expand the conditional formatting to all the cells in the pivot table and will also make it dynamic so that it just expands or contracts with the pivot table. Now let's just say that you did the conditional formatting and maybe you did some work in the middle on the screen and this icon kind of goes off the screen. Now, how do you get that similar option? So you can actually click on any of the cell that has been conditionally formatted. Go back to the home tab in the conditional formatting. You can click on manage rules and then click on the edit rule on uh, the rule that you have applied. And that's again where you will see all those three options that we actually saw in that little drop down right here. And again, you can just go pick up any of this one or this one, which is going to expand the conditional formatting to all the cells that are selected. Okay, so trick number six is pretty interesting. You can actually type a value on a label to replace the value or reposition the value. Please take a look. So in the region column here, which is in the pivot table, I have east, south, west, and north as four regions. And maybe I don't really wanna call east as east region. I wanna call it maybe as east two. You can actually click on any of the east regions and start calling that east two. And everywhere in the pivot table is actually going to replace that with east two. That is one part of the trick. The other part of the trick is that, let's just say that you don't want the first region to be east. You always want the first region to be west. You can, instead of east type west here, and every where it's just going to shuffle and make West as the first region in every single block of the customer right here. And you can just go ahead and type as many regions as you want. So let's just say the second region is not going to be East. Maybe it's going to be South and the third region is going to be North. You can just type that and it's going to shuffle the entire positioning of the regions across all the customers that we have. All right. The next string has got to do with cube formulas and customizing your pivot table formatting and layout. Now let's just say that you're trying to create a pivot table, but pivot table is very rigid. It doesn't really let you format the way you want or have the layout the way you want. You can actually customize that by cube formulas. If you don't already know what cube formulas are, this is absolutely going to be fantastic. So I'm trying to make a pivot table here with this particular data set and I start a pivot table and instead of just making a regular Excel pivot table, I'll click on add this to the data model. Now this actually means that I'm trying to create a pivot table using Power Pivot in Excel. So I actually click on OK and this pivot table that I now get in my Excel is not a regular Excel pivot table, it's the Power Pivot pivot table and maybe I just create a pivot table. So I'll just maybe get the date here, get rid of every month thing right here and maybe across the year I get the amount and maybe what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a slicer on the region and maybe I'd like to slice my entire year by different regions. Now what I want to do is I want to make this pivot table customizable and after I show my sales here I'd like to show the profit for every single year. Now that is not possible in a regular pivot table. If I actually add the profit here across every single year I'll get to see amount, I'll get to see the profit but all the profit cannot be taken from every single individual year and you can't really put that profit across all four years. Maybe that's something that I'd like to do. So what do I do? I just cancel that for the moment and I copy that pivot table control C and I I make that at the bottom. All right. Now what I do is instead of having the amount here, I'm just going to drag the profit right here and put that right here. Now you can see that these are two different pivot tables. It hasn't really come here. Although I have the ability to drag the entire pivot table and copy paste that pivot table right here, but maybe I just want it, you know, more cleaner and I want to have more control over formatting and things like that. What I can actually do now, because I initiated the pivot table using Power Pivot, I can convert this entire pivot table into cube formulas. Well, how do I do that? I click on the pivot table, I go to the Analyze tab. Under the OLAP tools, I can convert that to a formula. Now what this will do is, this will actually convert the entire pivot table into something called as cube formulas. You can see, take a look at the cube value formula on the top. Similar stuff, I can actually do it with the second pivot table, OLAP tools, convert to formulas. Now, one of the questions that you're gonna ask me now 
is that is the pivot table still sliceable or refreshable once you kind of update the data and maybe if you click on the slicer the answer to that is a big yes so if i actually click on north this pivot table gets sliced to only north data or east data or south data these are nothing but formulas you can actually cut and copy and paste them wherever you like in excel and as soon as your backend data updates these formulas will update the values in the pivot table as well just the cube formula is not really a pivot table now one of the things that you have to understand is that these formulas will not automatically spill over if you have 2009 data being added to the pivot table. So you'll have to work with that or maybe write another cube formula here to get 2009 data, but this will automatically not happen as it happens in an Excel pivot table. If you're considering extreme formatting and extreme layout, you know, customization of your pivot tables, this is one of the options to take a look for. All right, trick number eight, how do you stop the drill down? So almost everybody who has worked with pivot table enough actually has accidentally or intentionally explored this feature of the pivot table. So you, if you maybe click on any particular value two times, so double click on that value, you actually get the details of that particular number. It actually shows you that how that number has been formed in terms of individual transactions of your data. Now, sometimes this is helpful. Sometimes you actually want to stop the user to be able to drill down to, to actually take a look at the data. How do you actually do that? So if you click on the pivot table, right click and then go to pivot table options in the data tab right here, you can actually turn off the show details right here. If you just turn that off and click on OK. Now, if somebody tries to double click on the pivot table, he or she would not get those details that you got it initially. Trick number nine, my final trick is to do with get pivot data. So if you've been working with pivot table and you often write a formula right outside of the pivot table, you would have seen a formula popping up when you select a cell inside of the pivot table. That is nothing but get pivot data. Most people hate it. They want to turn it off. I will tell you how to turn it off, but I will also talk about the application of get pivot data. So here is what I mean. So let's just say I'm, I'm outside of the pivot table and maybe for some reason I want to calculate profitability. So which is nothing but profit divided by total sales, which is nothing but my profitability. I say equals to, and I just maybe click on that particular number and you can see that it doesn't really give me the cell reference. It actually gives me get pivot data. Now, most people don't like that. You can actually turn it off. And let me just first tell you how do you turn it off. So you can actually click on the pivot table, go to the analyze tab and right here in the options, we have a small little drop down here. You can go to the drop down and say that please turn off get pivot data. And that is going to take off the get pivot data of all your Excel files forever till the time you turn this back on. Anyways, I'm not going to do that for now. All right. Now let's just try to write the get pivot data. First, try to understand the syntax. And then let's just take a look at a case where you can actually use get pivot data to your benefit. So I'm actually going to come here, say equals to and select that cell and press enter. And I get that same value. So if you now take a look at that formula, the formula actually shows you that what data field are you trying to extract? Are you trying to extract profit? Are you trying to extract sales? What data field are you trying to extract? That's part number one. Then it asks you, hey, where is your pivot table starting from? So my pivot table is always starting from B4 and I doubt that's, that's going to change if my pivot table actually starts from here. And then you can see that we have region and we have East region actually refers to one column. You can see that it's asking, asking you for a field. Field simply means which column of the data region happens to be one of the columns in our data. And in that column region, I'm trying to extract the East data. Then another field, which is a uh, years field. It's again, the column of the data. And then which value in the years column, I'm trying to extract 2005. So this number, which is 146,980 belongs to actually profit, which is the data column. The pivot table starts from here. Region should be equal to East and year should be equal to 2005. And that's the number that I actually get. Now you can actually go ahead and you can customize the values maybe by selecting them through the cell. So the East can actually be customized and I can actually go ahead and pick that up from a particular cell. What I can actually do is I can maybe instead of manually typing East, I can delete that and I can say, Hey, why don't you pick up the region from this particular cell right here? And the years is again going to be maybe from this particular cell right here, comma, and this particular cell right here. Now, obviously I'll have to repeat the item labels because that cell is empty, but certainly that also works. And in that case, the formula actually can be dragged down to all the cells here and I can actually calculate the profit or profitable now here is a use case that I have to quickly build. So I'm just going to get rid of all these columns and show you the use case. So you can see that we have a small drop down here and I can actually pick up any particular region, East, South, West or North. And then I have made a small get pivot data formula. And I'm saying that I'd like to get total sales of the pivot table that starts at B4 from the column, which is years column. But that part that
that which year is actually coming from that particular cell, which is uh, this particular cell address. Let me just add a row here quickly. All right, so that is actually coming from this cell address. And then it says, hey, which region? So I'm actually picking up the region from this particular uh, drop down right here. And I actually drag the formula to the right hand side. The year changes, show that the sales change, and that is linked to my drop down right here. Now, the cool part is that I can actually go ahead and I can maybe click on north. I can click on west, I can click on east, and I can actually get any particular data off the pivot table for that particular region. Now, this is the stuff that you can also do it with the formula if you start arguing with me, that is totally okay and acceptable. But the part which is absolutely cool about this formula is that get pivot data actually makes it dynamic. So let's just say that if along with the region, I also add the name of the customer to my pivot table, your formula, which you have written as a get pivot data formula, is not going to break just because your pivot table has expanded. If you were trying to work with Excel formulas and a column gets added in between, it's likely that your formula actually breaks because the references of the cells have changed. In get pivot data, that does not happen. So in case you want to refer back to the pivot table and make the formula dynamic by you know changing parts of the formula right here, you can actually do that and make get pivot data like a really cool formula that you actually work with rather than actually disabling it. Let me know how did you find this. All right, those were my nine tricks about pivot tables. Let me know how many tricks you already knew and how many tricks you have learned from this particular video. I'd glad to know that. And if you're trying to learn Excel, Power BI, DAX, or Power Query right from scratch, I have some brilliant courses. I'm gonna leave those links at the bottom of the video and you can actually take a look at that. If you want help to learn any of these skills right from scratch, I highly suggest that you take a look at my courses and these are gonna be extremely beneficial. Let me know if you have any questions around this. I'll be glad to help. Thanks so much for watching this, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.